Hey YouTube, it's uh, Aiden slash just Aiden. Not gonna play for you guys today, but wanted to make a video about something that I'm really picky about, and I have been for a long time. That is cases. You guys can't see them, but I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eleven cases sitting right in front of me, um, and I'm gonna talk about all of them in various ways. I wanted to start with my case story. So I started on Euphonium. I played it like this. Um, in middle school, and I played through high school. Um, you guys already know part of that if you've seen my really old videos from 10, 12 years ago. Um, and a lot of times I would like walk to school and stuff. It was like a couple miles. Um, not a huge deal, but I would have to lug around the stupid Yamaha 321 case. And as a middle schooler, um, I weighed like 70 pounds or something like that. And of course, the Yamaha you find in the case is probably like... 18, 17 pounds, something like that, because it's kind of heavy case, kind of heavy instrument, heavy brass. Um, and so that's just like a significant portion of my body weight that I had to lug around. Um, and of course, I have this now, Yamaha 842, in this case. Um, and this is kind of a similar situation. I just hate lugging around a case like this. There's no options for it. You have a handle here, and you have a handle on the end. So when you put it on the end, you can pick it up. That's great, I like that, but uh, it sucks. Like, there's no good way to carry this. It's always banging your leg, your arms get tired, you have to constantly switch if you're carrying it for a long time. So this kind of started me on my case journey. Like, I, I want a case that I don't have to worry about quite as much. This case is all right, like it keeps the horn pretty protected, but otherwise, basically any other um, metric that we care about, it's not great. So let's talk about those metrics that we think about. Um, so use this for cases, right? Um, we have to have a case to put a horn in, so storage is part of it. And also, um, unless you're always playing in exactly the same place, you need that case to move from place to place. Transportation. So you have storage and transportation are the kind of the things that you use cases for, right? So we have different needs that we have those cases to fill. Um, one of them, I think probably sometimes the top priority is safety. We want the horn to be protected inside the case. We don't want it to get dented. We don't want it to fall out. Um, we don't want it to get uh, rained on or whatever. Um, so safety is a big one. Um, I like a case to be, a case to be light. Um, I don't like to um, lug around a heavy case so I can get away with it. Um, I like a case to be not significantly larger than the instrument that is inside of it. Um, that's something that I'm just really picky about. I hate cases that are just way bigger than the instrument inside, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, storage inside the case, obviously there's room for the instrument inside the case, um, but is there room for other stuff? Uh, mouthpieces, all your other extra crap. Um, if you have music that you need to take with you, it's kind of nice to have it in the case rather than some other kind of bag. Um, and the last consideration for me, is price, I like a case to be cheap, but it's not um, common that a case is gonna meet a lot of requirements and also still be cheap. I've gone through several cheap cases, um, especially for bass drum own, and just kind of, they're all terrible. So um, I'm willing to spend $400, $500 on a case that's gonna protect a $5,000 instrument. Um, it's just a matter of like a ratio. Like you have a really expensive instrument that you really like and you want to stay in one piece, are you going to spend $90 on a case to put it in? That's kind of silly in my opinion. So my needs for cases, they really depend, right? I have some cases that just sit here at home. I don't use them for anything else except for storage. I actually have a case that's just full of mutes because I don't have anywhere else to put those mutes and I think I have a slide in there too. Um, I also have some um, cases that just stay here and they have slides and bell sections and stuff. So those just need to have storage. They don't really need to do anything else. I'm not gonna take them anywhere. Not a big deal. Um, sometimes I fly, so I need a case that's small, that holds the instrument. Um, it's not gonna get a lot of attention, so I have some Marcus Bonus for that. Um, and I do a lot of gigging around town. I drive my car a lot, so I have to have cases that fit in my car, <clears throat> that protect the horn, that are light, that are not terrible to carry around, because I'm probably gonna have to do a lot of walking with them. So I have, varying needs. Your needs might be different. Um, a lot of students have a horn that just stays at school and so the the case for that doesn't need to be especially awesome. It just kind of has to hold the horn and keep it safe, probably not get dense. 
Um, and some people need cases that just travel all over the planet, and so they need the best possible light case that fits in an overhead, etc. Um, I'm either of those things, so I don't have those kind of cases. So, first of all, every case is a compromise in some way. There's no case that I think meets every criteria of being super safe, super light, having lots of sizes, um, lots of space inside, um, uh, being super small, and being super cheap. There's nothing that does all those things. So everything is a compromise. Um, and these are the cases, these first two cases are the ones that I think are the best, they give up the fewest things. And of course my first one is uh, the Marcus Vana base case. Um, the first thing that I noticed about this case, and it's not going to come across in the video as much, is that it's just tiny. This case is smaller, and I said this in my review of it, it's smaller than the ProTech tender trombone case. And I think every dimension except for this one, I mean it's shorter, it's smaller this way, it's smaller this way, it's lighter. Everything about it is smaller than a tenor case. Um, and that's huge to me. This is not very much larger, larger than the instrument that goes inside. It's also really safe. It's got a fiberglass shell. It's got really good zippers. It's got tons of storage because you have this big old pocket. I have a ton of music in here. I can fit way more stuff in there, including clothes. Um, it's not super light, I would say, but it's a lot lighter than a lot of other, especially stock bass trombone cases. So um, I mean, I'm not going to give it like a huge light um, thing for it, but it is really nice. Um, and of course, it's comfortable to carry around. This is probably my favorite case that I own. Um, it also looks really good. I just like it. Um, another one that meets a lot of those criteria, of course, is the screw belt case. Um, this is kind of cheating because the horn has to be modified to fit in here, but it kind of does everything that the base case does, and it's smaller. So, huge, huge plus to that. <clears throat> Here's a case that meets basically everything except for storage inside the case, and that's maybe my favorite case of all time, SKB 360, which is tiny, just barely larger than the small bore tenor that fits inside. Um, it's safe. I mean, this thing has gotten beat up. I should probably get a new one at some point. All the feet are totally broken. Um, the foam is starting to have some issues. It's really light. Um, it fits the horn, obviously, um, and it was super cheap. I think the only downside SK3, SKB360 is storage. There's only a thing right here and a thing right here. So there's not a lot of stuff you can put inside, but that's really the only downside to the SKB360. This is probably my favorite case that meets almost all the specifications just because it is so cheap, so light, so small. I love this thing. This has the fewest compromises, I think. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, so cases that meet um, only price. I have one right now because I have a base that I use for work. I didn't want to buy a really expensive case for it because I don't care that much about it. Um, but I needed a case, so I bought an Eastman. I used to have an Eastman. I used it for a while with my um, Holton 180 and I think a Bach after that and my Shire's Bach. I used it for that too. And uh, I kind of hate it. It's not really good at anything except that it was $90. So, my, it's, it's large. Like, this is smaller than most stock cases, but I don't really count stock cases because they're all terrible. Um, this is large. It's not especially safe. Let's see if it's happening right now. Well, it's close. Um, this tab that holds the slide pocket, it just let go. What's the slide out? Um, this Velcro like basically doesn't work, and so almost every time I open this, the slide is just loose in the case, just banging around. So it's not safe, it doesn't keep the horn safe. There's almost no storage, there's just this pocket at the end. Um, there's all this wasted space inside. Um, it's not comfortable to carry. Wow! It almost never closes perfectly, it just did right now for some reason, because I'm showing it on video. Um, I don't even have the backpack straps on here because I don't actually have to carry it that much. Um, but the backpack straps are terrible. So basically this meets none of my criteria except that it was cheap. And it technically has enough room for a bass trombone. But it doesn't even keep this trombone safe. Um, I don't think I'm going to get rid of it because it is almost brand new. But 
This is one of my least favorite cases of all time. And I'm kind of mad that I got it. Um, here's a case that was actually cheaper because I got it for free, uh, but worse in a lot of ways. This is a Walt Johnson flight case. This was kind of the cutting edge of cases maybe 30 years ago. Um, fiberglass, so it's lighter than a lot of like wood cases and stuff. Um, but like the horn protection inside is uh, basically nil. What's in here right now? I have a slide. Um, I don't even know what this is for. It doesn't do anything if there's a horn in here. But you can see it's just kind of an open space. <laughs> I guess if you carry a horn in here, you like put stuff inside to keep it safe. Um, this one, it's not a big deal because I don't actually use it. Um, but obviously there's just like, there's no safety in here at all. So this beats basically zero of the criteria because it's also pretty big, pretty heavy, pretty cumbersome. Also, I wouldn't say great case. I think it's just cool though. So next one. So here's a case that is small compared to the instrument, but kind of doesn't meet any other criteria. And that's my um, Contra case, which is kind of the same design as my SKB360. And that's this French style Contra case. It's very small and it comes out from the bell, but it has no concessions for foreign safety whatsoever. This is my friend, I'll just keep that in there. <laughs> and obviously I have to have foam in here to keep the bell section safe because there's no other way to do it. Um, the slide can just move like this. There's nothing at the end to keep it in place. Um, there's also foam at the bell end to keep the bell from getting damaged. Um, not a great case. I would love to get a replacement for this that would be better in a bunch of other categories, but can't find a stupid case for this thing. And then of course there are gig bags. So I haven't talked about those yet, but gig bags give up the safety card and kind of do all the other things. Maybe they're cheap, but they're way lighter. Um, they're just kind of fun to carry around. They usually look better, I think. Um, so what's my first one? Oh, my um, euphonium gig bag. So I get really tired of carrying around this stupid Yamaha case. And so I got the ProTech euphonium gig bag. Um, I did not splurge on this because there are really nice gig bags out there, but they all have the same amount of protection. They're just soft. You know, there's no way this is going to protect the horn. Don't worry. <laughs> there's no horn in here right now. Um, but it is very light. It's very comfortable to carry. It's got a ton of storage in this giant pocket. Um, and it kind of meets all the criteria except that it's got no protection. And that's just something you have to deal with. If you're going to use a gig bag, you have to know that it's not going to protect your horn. And my very, very pretty um, Giardinelli tenor gig bag. Um, I really like these things. I have two of them actually. Um, and of course they have not zero protection. The slide is pretty safe, but the bell section can get crunched if you just look at it sideways. Um, but I use this because it looks good. And actually this one, which I'll show you in a video coming up soon, doesn't have a case. So this is the only way I can keep it in uh, around. And here's a case that meets some criteria we haven't talked about at all um, and gives up the safety aspect. And this is my double tenor case. So for fitting two tenors, this is pretty small. It's very light, it's very comfortable to carry around. And of course, basically not safe at all for the bell sections. So um, giving up safety, but I get to carry around two tenors um, in one place, which is pretty cool. So there's some ideas on cases. I'm really picky about them because I have to use them so often. Um, and then hopefully that gives you some idea of what to look for in your own case. Um, don't you know, buy the cheapest possible thing just because it's cheap. Get the best case that you can get for your horn. See you guys next time.